It's great to have you with us. It's so good to be get together on Christmas Eve and what a way to celebrate Jesus' birthday. Some serious key jangling going on there. Even the grinchiest of us had to get the keys out. The song gets me thinking, it's Jesus' birthday. What w could we get him after Larissa's little talk? There's so many things that we could get Jesus. Uh, what do we give? Jesus Christ, Son of God, Saviour, Lord of the universe. What do you give the one who owns everything? I'm thinking probably a fishing kayak because he was into fishing. Or even a stand-up paddleboard would be great. He could do that, spend some time with his uh, fishermen friends. But then again, if he can walk on water, I suppose he doesn't need either of those. So what would he want? Um, it's a funny old thing. So often we talk about Christmas as a gift of God to us. And it is. Jesus, Emmanuel, the very embodiment of God with us, is as good a gift as you could get. A life-changing exchange, if ever you saw one. But the question could be reasonably asked, what's in it for God? Well, I suppose there's some joy in it for the giver whenever we get the gift right, don't, uh, I reckon. We all know it. Uh, there's nothing quite like nailing the brief when it comes to gift giving. We've all seen the surprise and joy when our loved one opens the present that has been the perfect gift. I haven't had that happen too many times. Um, but when the giver nails the brief, uh, that's a gift in and of itself. Uh, when Joanne bought me my first kayak, uh, she nailed the brief. I'm just saying, uh, the very definition of nailing the brief, I didn't see it coming at all. Uh, it, it was such an awful, awesome gift that brought such joy to me. Uh, the interesting thing it is that when you nail it like that, the pleasure actually goes both ways. I reckon I was thanking her for months afterwards. I still thank her, and I've got no doubt that it brings a sense of satisfaction all on its own. But I reckon the main way that Joanne could see and enjoy the power in nailing the brief with gift-giving was how transformative it was. That gift actually was a game-changer for me. Since Joanne gave me the original kayak at Christmas, I've paddled a 1,000 kilometres every year since. I have a newer and faster kayak, but it would never have happened without her making the first move. Her gift changed my fitness, it changed my strategy for well-being, it changed my stress management, my leisure time. It was a brilliant gift unbelievably well-timed. Having said that, I reckon the power of any gift actually lies in the response of the person who receives it. Joanne could have given me the very same gift and I could have still been excited about it and still celebrated it on the day, even taken it for a paddle, uh, then packed it in the shed and never used it again. Lots of gifts are like that, aren't they? Uh, or just use it twice a year when I went down to the beach at Christmas and Easter. That same gift could have led to zero transformation and just more stuff in my shed. The power of any gift lies in the response of the person who receives it. The gift of Christmas is no exception, of course. The same gift is offered to everyone. Some don't accept it at all. Some take the Christmas gift up and it transforms their lives. Others take it and put it in the shed on the off chance that they might use it someday. Uh, you know, Christmas and Easter and the odd existential crisis. Uh, sometimes we treat Jesus like that old phone or laptop. We've long since replaced him, but he's just there just in case we need him or as a sort of a, an eternal backup plan. The original Christmas gift is such that it can be rejected, it can be shelved, or it can be utilised. The original Christmas gift is summed up beautifully by John 3, 16 and 17. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God didn't send his, world, his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now, because this passage mentions eternal life, lots of people mistakenly think that Jesus is only referring to life after death. Uh, he's not. In this passage, Jesus is talking about saving us 
for an eternity that begins now. Actually, in other words, for those who take the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, the transformation actually begins now. Not just after you die, Jesus' saving work can actually begin to change our way of being from the moment we open our hearts to him. It's an awesome gift on offer, but the nature of the giver is such that he actually gives us the ability to choose whether we want it for ourselves, and therefore, we have the ability to also reject his gift. I don't know how many mums and dads we have in the audience, but I suspect quite a few. Uh, I must say one of the most transformative moments in faith and life for me was that of becoming a father. I will never forget that first day when my oldest son was born. Uh, I was never really much into kids as a young man, but becoming a dad completely flipped it on its head. Right from when their little babies in, in your arms, kids seem to profoundly impact their parents. Uh, I remember looking into Lachlan's hours, uh, eyes only hours after he was born, and the moment was profound in its impact. I will never forget it. I discovered it then and many times since that at the end of the day, there is nothing we crave more than connection with those whom we love. One of the ways that this plays out for me as a dad is the value that I place on connection with my kids above most things. And probably more, even more so as they've gotten older. I reckon one of the best things that we ever did with our kids as they got older uh, and turned into adults was go on a road trip together uh, up central Australia and to Darwin. And on our first day camping at Uluru, uh, we, in a fit of enthusiasm, everyone got up far too early and froze our backsides off waiting for the sun to come up over the rock. We hopped up, I think it was like five o'clock in the morning or some ridiculous hour. Sun didn't rise until about seven. So we're all like standing up there freezing. And as the sun began to come up, uh, my son Teddy, perfect timing, uh, my son-in-law um, played Here Comes the Sun as it, as it was coming out. We were all laughing and enjoying the moment. And here's a picture of us at the time. We were having a good time. Uh, you can see the joy on our faces. It, I feel great to actually just talking at Just looking at that photo is great. There's nothing we crave more, I don't think, than connection with those we love. You know, this, you'll know the story already of my, our horrendous holiday in 2021, where in COVID we made the rookie error of trying to get away as a family. And we planned to go away exactly the same as this trip, go away for a few weeks in Queensland. We thought that it would be the same, uh, a blast from start to finish. And here we are on the way up there where we're all ex excited at the Parks Observatory and excited to be together. And you can, we're, we're pumped about it. A bit over a week later, that holiday was shattered by a COVID outbreak in Queensland and all the kids just fled home. And so Joanne and I are in this massive house on the Sunshine Coast, sitting together wondering what has become of our lives. What you don't know is I woke up the next morning and I was, I was so sad. I actually wept like a child. I, I, don't, I don't think I've done it before or since uh, in that sense. Um, I was just really sad. And I couldn't believe how sad I was. It, it actually took Joanne and I quite a few days to recover. You know, there's nothing more that we crave than connection with those we love. And when it's gone, there's a deep sense of grief that accompanies it. You know, that's why we have the candles down the front here at Christmas. And that's why so many people actually take us up on that offer. Because when that connection is gone, it puts grief in our hearts. You know what I'm talking about. Christmas symbolises the penultimate effort of God to reconnect with his children. When the Gospel of Matthew says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Second only to Easter, Christmas symbolises God going out of his way to connect with those he loves by becoming one of them. Christmas is the bookmark in every year where we celebrate God 
with us, a.k.a. Jesus Christ, Son of God, Saviour, enters our little tiny world to bring life to it and connect us forever with our God who loves us. Christmas Day is the day that we celebrate God's Son, humbling himself and entering our world, not on a spaceship or as a fully grown emperor in the seat of power in Rome, but through the birth canal as a helpless baby dependent on its mother's milk. It blows my mind that God would do that. Christmas represents God with a can-do attitude, a God who will go to almost any lengths to connect with those he loves. Christmas is a celebration of the connection with God becoming possible for all of us. The beginning of the Gospel of John spells out the ultimate end game of Christmas. To all who believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become the children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. Do you notice who gets the right to become the children of God in that? All. All who believe in him and accept him. All means all. Anyone who chooses to follow Christ gets to be called a child of God. There's no other criteria, not those who are filled with niceness, not those who haven't been naughty, not those who are religious or go to church regularly, all, all who believe and accept him through life, death and resurrection of Jesus, we all get the right to be called children of God. So God chose us. That's what Christmas is about. God chose us. The question for each of us to consider this Christmas is, will I choose God? When God created humankind, he made us for a relationship in doing that. He gave us a critical component for any relationship, and that's the ability to choose. Of course, relationship by force is no relationship at all. So rather than control us to within an inch of our lives, our Heavenly Father gives us the capacity to choose, even if that means we don't choose him. One of the things that I've prioritised in my calendar since my kids were young, is having breakfast with each of them one-on-one once a month. I love it as a dad. It's one of my favourite things to do. It requires a bit of planning to make sure that they're in my diary, but it's worth it. Uh, It doesn't always work the way that I plan it. Uh, One of the things that's happened from time to time with each of them, particularly in their teenage years, is I'd knock on their door about 30 minutes before... Uh, we leave and say, are we good for brekkie this morning? Uh, And occasionally I would hear a sleepy reply, Dad, can we give it a miss this morning? (laughs) I need my sleep. Um, Trying not to be offended, I would say, yeah, sure, we'll reschedule. Knowing full well it would be another month before we could reconnect. They didn't get it and probably won't until they have kids of their own. Because there is nothing we crave more than connection to the ones we love. When God built free choice into us, he knowingly set himself up for disappointment. He knew some of us would choose other things over him. And yet, like any good parent, he keeps putting himself out there. I don't know where you're at in relation to God at this time of year, but one thing that has not changed in the last 2,000 years, since that first Christmas, is that there is nothing God craves more than connection with those he loves. And that means you. It means me. It means anyone who wants to take him up in it. Believe it or not, the final step of connection is actually up to us. The Christmas gift is this, God loves you and through Jesus Christ he's made the way to connect with you. The question that remains as we close out this evening is, would you like to connect with him? Some of us may not have chosen to connect with him because we don't know him or what he's like. This Christmas, maybe it's time to let God introduce himself to you. This Christmas, maybe open yourself up and let God connect with you. 
I reckon that for, that's for some of us, uh, it might be that you didn't even know that choosing a relationship with God was actually an option. Maybe you've never thought about a God as someone who you can relate with or talk to or hear from. Well, can I encourage you to take the leap? This Christmas, open yourself up and let God connect with you. And for some, maybe making a choice to step toward a relationship with God is a been there, done that type experience. You may have chosen to relate to God when you were younger, but time and pressure takes its toll on any relationship. And maybe you've long forgotten that initial relationship with God, but can I remind you, he has not forgotten you. And maybe it's time to reconnect. This Christmas, open yourself up and let God connect with you again. Maybe you think you're in the too naughty category and that God isn't interested in naughty people like you. Well, let me tell you that if Jesus is any indicator of a God, who God is interested in, naughty seems to be on top of his list. Read the Gospels. Jesus is the very embodiment of God with us. He spent a lot of time hanging out with naughty types. Uh, he went to their parties. He got to know their friends. And he even called a few of them to be on his core team. The truth is, God came down for all of us. Naughty, the nice, the forgetful, the oblivious. This Christmas, wherever you're at, open yourself up. Let God connect with you. Christmas is a moment in every year that reminds us again of the option to choose. And I want to give you that opportunity right now. And we do that by talking with God. So let's, let's pray together. Lord, we give you the thanks for the gift of new life that you've given to us through Jesus. We thank you for the extraordinary effort you've gone to to get our attention and to connect with us. And so this Christmas, we bring ourselves before you just as we are. At first Christmas, Lord, the angels declared that you are Lord and Saviour, and now we want to do the same. So in your hearts, just say something like, Jesus, I believe, I would like to connect with you. Save me and fill me with your presence. Just ask him right where you are. We ask for forgiveness, God, for the times we've ignored your efforts and done our own thing anywhere. We're sorry for the impact that this has had on ourselves and on others. You might like to ask for God's forgiveness for anything that comes to mind that you're not proud of. Just ask his forgiveness right there. It's on offer. And so this Christmas, Lord, we thank you that in Christ we can begin again. We can start with a fresh slate. And most of all, we can be connected with you. So Lord, in the coming days, I ask that you would make yourself powerfully known to those who've believed and accepted you today. And I ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen.